Nas from Nastronomy here. Keeping up with the theme of processing comets, I thought I would show you a quick video on how to make an animation of your comet zooming through space. Serial provides two different methods of doing this. The first is a star stacked animation, where the background star stays still and the comet zooms across your screen. If we do it right, the end result should look something like this video. This is my favorite of the two because it looks more natural. This can also be called a global star alignment stack. I mentioned the word global because we'll see this again in the video. The second method is a comet stacked animation, where the comet stays still and the background stars move. This is a cool effect and it looks like this if we do it right. If during imaging the comet starts to stray too much to the edge of your frame, you'll start noticing this black area on the screen because there is no data of either star or comet. If you watched my last video on how to process and stack a comet, the first part of this video will look very similar because it involves going through calibrating our lights. I'll go through this very quickly, but if you want a more in-depth look, I recommend looking at my previous video. And you just need to check out the first nine or so minutes of the video where I go through each of the steps one by one very pretty slowly. Uh, in this video, I'll go through them very quickly. So let's get started. So I have Cyril open here and the part of the comments tutorial that I will follow is the prepare for global star stacks animation. So we'll have to do uh, some of the steps beforehand so that our images are ready. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this only works with calibrated lights. So I will quickly go over that step. Uh, one more time, you can watch my last video for a more in-depth uh, process. So I'm going to load my lights here. I have two sets of data, one before and after uh, Meridian Flip. I'm going to load 50 of the frames after my Meridian Flip, which is about uh, 150 minutes, so two and a half hours. Uh, I have my lights. Uh, before I press Convert, I want to make sure that you know that you should be in your new working directory or your current working directory if you're working off a different of a previous session. I'll click debayer here, convert. All right, so I skipped through the other sequences. Um, so I added my bias, darks, and flats as well. Uh, and now we will work on our bias and we will stack them. Uh, with biases, you need no normalization, average, one uh, sigma clipping, and sigma low and three, sigma, sigma low and high set to three. All right, that looks good. Now we'll do our flats. Select flats, go to pre-processing, select use offset, and then we'll use our bias. Everything else keep as is, and click start pre-processing. And then we will stack our master flat, so we'll do this. Normalization will be multiplicative. Uh, leave everything else as is, and then click start stacking. All right, that's done. Now we're going to do our darks. Click on stacking. Normalization is no normalization at all because it's a dark, and then we'll do start stacking. All right, that's done. Now we will do our lights. Lights, pre-processing, uncheck offset, use dark, master dark, and then we will use master flat. So PP flats. Leave everything as is. We can estimate our cold and hot pixels. It looks good. We'll do debayer before saving, and then we'll do start pre-processing. Okay, so that's good. So we can now stretch our image, uh, do an auto stretch, and see what it looks like. Uh, if we do RGB, again, we have the orange hue, uh, as is with my setup here. So we will do a background extraction, polynomial. So let's, so let's set the degree to 1. We'll generate. I will remove some of the dots around the comet. Um, I don't think I'm, I was able to catch any tail because of the moon, but I'll do it anyway. So we'll go back to RGB, compute background, voila. And then we will apply the sequence and we'll create a new sequence with prefix BKG. All right, so now that part is done. So now we can do two different types of animations. The first one is where the stars are static and the comet moves through the field of view here. So we're going to open, if it's not already selected, your uh, BKG PP lights sequence. And then we will go to registration. And we will do a global star alignment deep stack because we want the stars to stay static. And once this is good, we can click go register. All right, there we go. So that actually finished. So now if we go back to sequence, we have another sequence called our BKG PP lights sequence. Um, and now we can open the frames list and see what they look like. So this is what it looks like. The first thing we want to do is we want to uh, 
export this as another sequence. Um, so what the uh, serial tutorial recommends is doing global um, because if you end up using the super stacking scripts that they provide later, uh, you can it'll it'll target via global uh, so you don't have to edit anything. So I may go over that in another tutorial later on. So I'll do export sequence. The sequence exports successfully, and now it'll show up here as a, so if it doesn't, just click search sequences, and here we go. It's a global sequence. So it'll be pretty much the exact same thing, or it looks similar. Um, you can see, I think you can see some of the tail here. It's a little hard to see on video, uh, even for me without stacking it, so I will close this. Um, so we have this, and what we want to do is uh, set our stretch to linear, so that it's all completely black and then we will do a histogram stretch so again as i like to do do auto stretch we can zoom in and then let's play with this so the, the background kind of starts darkening Alrighty, so i you know i fast forward through that so you didn't have to watch me playing with the settings so this is what i have uh, i think it looks okay and then i'll click apply to sequence it'll create a new prefix MTF in front of our uh, new sequence and we'll click apply. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And if you go through the frames uh, and you select through them, um, it's been stretched because it is on linear. So the next, the only thing you have to do after this is back in sequence here, we have our MTF global sequence. From the file type, you go from FITS imaging to either AVI or MP4. It has both H.264 and H.265. I'll just do AVI because it's easy. It also has WebM and, and other formats, so you can up, export and do what you want with this. I'm just going to do AVI, and then I'll do uh, star stack or stars static animation. And then we'll do export sequence. Uh, before you do export sequence, you can also update the frame rate. So I have 50 of them. I think I'll do 10 FPS so that it's uh, about five seconds long and I think it'll still look smooth. So let's do export sequence. All right, so that exported and if I bring in my explorer here, um, I have a new file called star static animation. So let's play that and see what that looks like. There you go. There you go. It's uh, you can see the loop here, and it's at the end. You can see some clouds coming in. That's why I had to end my session. I wish I could have gotten another two and a half hours worth. But you can see just how much the comet moves against the background sky here. Back in Serial, the other type of animation you can do is a comet static. Uh, I I don't think it looks as good, but we I'll show you anyway, and because that's also covered in the written tutorial. So we'll go back and reopen our our register background extracted PP lights direct. Uh, thing and then we will and then we will need to register this on the comet itself so I'll go back to the stretch and do auto stretch go to registration switch the registration method to comet and I want to pick object one so I'll go to sequence make sure my first frame is selected I'll create a box around oops can't do it on RGB set it to green and create a little box here and I click pick object one and then I'll go to sequence open frame list, go to the very last, which is my 50th frame, registration, create a draw, draw a box around the nucleus here, and do pick object 2. And you can see the velocity as uh, the delta x and delta y here. So once this is done, I'll click on go register. And that took just 54.84 milliseconds, super fast. So now we have the reg our BKG PP lights sequence registered on the comet. So now that this is done, now what we can do is we can create another sequence. So we'll set this set this back to fits images and then we will do then we will name it name this the uh, comet stack um, or comet sequence. Do this make sure normalize images and then we'll do export sequence. Confirm crop. There's no crop. Whoops, hold on. But I'm just gonna try and crop that. We don't want that. So make sure the box is deselected, just click anywhere, and we'll click on export sequence. All right, sequence exported successfully, and now we have a, uh, again, if you don't see it, do search sequences, and then there we go, comet sequences here. So now if we go from frame one to frame three, you'll see that the comet stays where it is, 
but the background moves and uh, as i mentioned it's i don't really like this animation because uh the the background does uh you know turn into a black screen because there's nothing there you don't have a wide enough view of the comment especially if you're uh, stacking over if you captured this over many hours so but anyways you know go back to one auto stretch i'll go back to linear image processing do another histogram transformation auto and again let's all right so i just did an auto stretch and then manual adjustments so we'll do apply to sequence it'll create an mtf comet sequence so let it finish that it does it very quickly and then we have an mtf comet so now if you go back to rgb you'll see that this is what it looks like and now we can set the base name of the sequence export to avi again or mp4 if that's what you like we'll do comet uh comet static animation you can name it whatever you want and then fps is uh 10 and then once you click normalize images you click export sequence All right, the sequence exports successfully. Now, if I go back to my directory, I have a comet static animations. There we go. I did it. And then the star static is here. So if I play this, this is what it looks like. The background stars move, but the comet stays still. If you were able to successfully animate your comet, congratulations. Otherwise, if you're having any issues, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you. If you want to continue moving forward and stacking your comment, you can still do so by going into the stacking tab and going through the process. If you want to stack on your stars, you'll have to go back to your registered lights, re-register them under the global star alignment process, and then go through the stacking process then. Sometimes it could be easier to just start from scratch, so if you want to delete all of your sequences or you want to start a new home directory, you can do so as well and follow my previous video. There's still time to catch the comment if you haven't had a chance yet. It's still around and it will be for a few more weeks. I'm hopeful that more comments will head our way and we'll get more opportunities to stack and make animations of comments. Until then, clear skies.